Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to keep long running processes running over SSH using screen, even if you become disconnected from the remote machine. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start off by opening up a terminal and I'm going to SSH over to a remote machine, which is called Cylon and just log that in. And then I'm going to open up another terminal and SSH over to the exact same remote machine. Okay, so I have two SSH connections, both using the same user account on the same remote machine. Okay, so I'm just going to start off by creating a quick Python script called timer just for this demonstration. So um, I'm just going to import time and then create a for loop. So for i in range, this will loop 200 times. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to print out the current time. So time.ctime, that's just to get it into something that's readable for us. And I'm going to pass time.time .time into that. So time.time .time just generates the epoch time, which is in seconds, and then time.c time converts that into something that we can read. And then I'm just going to run time.sleep and sleep for one second. So this runs 200 times and it sleeps for one second after it's printed out the time. So I'm just going to exit that now, just save and quit that. And I'm just going to run it. So python timer.py. And as you can see, it's just printing out the time once every second. Now I'm going to come over to this other terminal and I'm going to look for this process ID for this uh, Python script. So PS AUX and I'm going to pipe the output of that into grep and I'm going to grep for the name of that script. So timer.py. And as you can see, this is the PID. So 6492. Now I'm just going to simulate us losing a connection to this server. So I'm just going to close this terminal and yep, close that. And if we run this again, so we look for the same process ID, you'll see that we'd no longer have that process running. Even though we still have this connection with the same user to the same server. So I'm going to open up a terminal again and I'm just going to SSH back into the remote machine. But this time I'm going to use screen to run this command. So I'm just going to open a new screen session. So just a generic one. So screen and I'm going to run Python timer. So I'm just going to run that same timer script again. And as you can see, it's running. And then if I come on over to this second terminal here and run same command looking for the process ID, you'll see that this is the process ID over here. So 6682. And now this time, I'm just going to close this terminal again to simulate us losing a connection to this server and just click close. And look for the process ID again. And as you can see, it's still running. So let's open that connection back up again. So SSH Cylon. And if we run screen dash ls to list any screen sessions that exist. You can see we have one. So we can reattach to that using screen dash r. And as it's the only session, I don't need to pass in the name of it. And as you can see, our script is still running and continued to run, even though we weren't connected to this server anymore. So you can see that using a terminal multiplexer like screen allows you to keep processes running, even if you close the SSH connection. So just say you have a long running job that you want to run overnight and you don't want to leave your machine on, but you're running it on a remote server. You can just use screen to run whatever it is you're running. Maybe it's a backup or whatever it is. And then when you want to check on the progress, you can just SSH back in and then use screen and reconnect back to that screen session and your process will still be running. So I'm just going to create a new screen window and I'm going to open up Vim and just start typing. So this is some 
very important text. There we go. And I'm not going to save this. Um, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So I'm just going to split this screen and I'm just going to open up the timer window down here. And I'm not going to bother saving this really important document that we started writing, but I'm just going to close the terminal now. We can now just open that terminal up again and just SSH back into the remote server. And then just list the screens that are currently running. So let's just reattach to the one that we previously had. Whoops, I forgot the dash there to reattach. There we go. And as you can see, our timer process was still running. So our timer script is still running. And I'll just switch over to our very important text document. So that's still there and it still has our document open, even though we didn't save the Vim buffer. So we can just carry on typing. So I'll just type in some rubbish. Everything's working great. So you can see how useful something like Screen is when you're working on a remote machine. So if you want to find out more about Screen, I did a tutorial covering all of the basics of Screen. So if you just click on the iCard in the top right corner now, you can go and watch that. But that's brought us to the end of this tutorial. So I hope you found it useful and thanks for watching. Goodbye.